I think on that note, we have Mrinal Singh, the CEO and CIO at Incred AMC, also uh, with us to talk to us about the market texture. Mrinal, hi, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And it looks like it is going to be a special session, perhaps that all-time high level, just around 10 points away. Once we cross that, what are the next levels to watch out for? And which sectors do you think will lead that? So very interesting question uh, and a very relevant too. Uh, I think the next leg of growth in India is clearly going to come from uh, you know capex oriented uh, investments that the economy is going to see, and the outcome would be in manufacturing output increase. So well, the sectors that uh, we think are going to drive the next leg of growth uh, in the context of Indian economy, and I think it should reflect on the marketplace as well, uh, should be capital goods, building materials, things like you know. Uh, uh, mortgage, uh, housing, and stuff like that. So these are places where we will naturally see volumes pick up. Uh, we will see investments, uh, you know, lined up. And uh, there are early indicators in that direction which are clearly pointing of a revival of the capex theme or the capex uh, uh, scheme of things in the in the economy. Right, um, Rinal, the share also joining in the conversation and over the last uh, few uh, weeks or months, we've actually seen a furious rally take place in the PSU names, uh, especially in the PSU banking names. Do you think that's where the outperformance will be led by when it comes to the uh, banking sector as a whole? So we, we have of late seen after a very long uh, pause uh, demand for credit. And the demand for credit, if you see, is largely coming from MSME. So the industrial credit, or the corporate credit as people normally uh, say. I think uh, PSU lenders are generally a large participant led by uh, big names like P uh, SBI and PNB and BOB. So obviously uh, the interest rate cycle is also in their favor. So, uh, but then uh, our, our inclination is more towards, uh, and they will obviously do well as the, as the credit growth picks up, particularly from the industrial and the corporate side. But our, our uh, clear preferences towards the consumer of those credits basically uh, the guys or businesses who are going to deploy their credit for some productive outcome, uh, where we think the value addition could be significant, our ability to understand and invest in the choices of uh, valuation risk reward are far more uh, superior, widespread, and deep uh, in that context. Okay, so that's uh, that's how the financial space is stacking up. But um, do you think that whatever were the concerns that were there at the start of the year with respect to war, crude prices going uh, higher, etc., they're all over now and it's going to be a one-way rally? Or do you expect the consolidation to continue? So we are going to uh, see a very different set of sectoral uh, earning trends and that will reflect on the returns that would come across uh, so particularly inflation, food prices, and crude, there are two aspects of inflation that matter uh, for our domestic economy. Uh, given the way the uh, reserve oil levels start, the winter crop is going to be uh, quite good. Uh, and crude, uh, although has been elevated for a long period of time, uh, for a variety of reasons, war in Europe being one of them, uh, we've seen of late, uh, uh, you know, the crude prices having come down. And uh, the outlook for uh, food production being good, uh, the rural economy has been dragging, I think, uh, in run-up to elections, we generally see the government's uh, spending towards rural increase. Uh, if we see a good winter crop, I think uh, from that uh, angle, at least things will get sorted for better. If crude comes down, I think significant uh, input prices uh, and uh, inflation uh, could, could trickle down, which would do uh, good to both interest rates, industry, as well as the headline inflation number. And, and things will very much be in place for a, for a set of industries, for a set of businesses to actually uh, uh, progress towards a growth path uh, that is more or less lined up in that space. So, Mrinal, since you're talking about the two factors, crude as well as uh, rural demand, how do you think this will, um, you know, uh, this will augur for the entire auto sector because we have seen a massive rally already when it comes to the auto stocks. But this morning, incidentally, we had a note coming in from CLSA's Lawrence Belanco, which is suggesting to book profits when it comes to m and and Aisha. Uh, are you part of the camp which believes that it's time to perhaps book some profits or are you looking at this upside rally to continue for the auto stocks? So we would uh, club uh, the two-wheeler as well in that space. Uh, I think what we've seen uh, for the last four quarters or so a very diversionary trend uh, within the uh, consumer category, uh, where, for example, uh, uh, categories or segments like ACs, phones, cars, uh, two-wheelers, you name it. And we've seen higher ticket items show volume growth, although the overall base is small. But we've seen entry-level uh, you know, volume getting stagnated. 
uh, and the prices also, but the volume is very large over there. So which is a reflection of uh, the rural economy kind of uh, not participating in the growth and the urban economy actually growing, which is what we have largely seen in, in the four-wheeler high ticket uh, you know, SKUs. I think uh, now it's time for the rural part of the economy to uh, show growth. Uh, uh, the way things are stacked up, both from the uh, election side, from the uh, the winter crop uh, harvest side, as well as other things, I think uh, the rural part, and in particular auto, I would I would uh, be more inclined towards ancillaries and two wheelers, uh, you know, which feed into the rural uh, scheme of things, uh, and and that is where we would uh, deploy our investments into, and the risk reward is quite favorable in that space. <clears throat> Okay, so that's as far as the auto space is concerned. But Mrinal, just before we let you go, wanted to understand how you're looking at the IT space as well. And the street is clearly divided there. On one hand, you have corrections of around 20 to 30 percent, which makes it attractive uh, and gives you that FOMO, perhaps that uh, you should be looking at buying in. On the other hand, there is this worry that US is headed in a recession and the earnings estimates are not fully factoring in the slowdown that is possible. Um, how do you see that stacking up for the IT sector? So we'll have to take a very uh, value conscious approach in IT. Uh, I think uh, the swing in IT, because it's very well uh, integrated into US scheme of things uh, in particular, uh, we will see overreaction by the markets. The businesses are very good cash flow generating. The quality of cash is very, very good. So for a good price, I think from an investment uh, uh, prism, I would pick up some select names and keep them. Uh, but I have to be very, very particular about the valuation and the price. We are not going to see uh, the headwinds uh, go away uh, from IT or particularly the markets that they feed into anytime soon. Uh, recession is a strong word. A slowdown itself can have an impact. A recession will have far more impact. But these businesses uh, contribute in a manner and way that actually help uh, their customers navigate through such times. So the volume demand is not going to significantly uh, you know, reflect the slowness or the recession trends that we are going to see in the Western world. In fact, the demand uh, uh, for such services where they take out costs and effectively do generate similar level of SLAs might continue uh, on a trajectory, albeit slower than what we've seen in the recent past. So IT businesses uh, selectively for a right risk reward, uh, we would place uh, in our portfolios. All right, um, Rinal, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us on the show to talk about where you see the markets headed, which sectors will outperform going ahead. That was Rinal Singh of Incred AM.